My name is Alex Lugo, and today I am going to mess around and recreate my Lua lava lamp in Rust with the Piston graphics and game engine. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I actually am going to use some crates for this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and use the cargo build system and package manager. So we're gonna start this off by getting to our directory and run cargo init. There we go. So we check back in here. We'll see we now have a cargo.toml file. And I did do a quick rundown of this in my what is Rust video. So let's see, we're gonna have two dependencies here. We're gonna give it piston window and we want it to be at least version 0.93.0. And we want to do RAND 0.6.5. All right, just like that, no problem. So now let's actually get into the real Rust code. We're gonna use our namespaces, piston window, and use RAND, just like that. I'm gonna call this, we're gonna go into source. Yeah, we're gonna save it to that, why not? Okay, we have our main Rust file, we have our namespaces, our dependencies, so let's actually start writing out everything we need for this lava lamp. So if you remember the Lua video I did originally on this lava lamp, you this should look a little familiar to you, but now I'm going to redo it in Rust because this was a project I did to get a bit better at this awesome new language. How did I misspell height that badly? Alright, it's also going to be F64 and it's going to be 300. You know what? Actually, let's make it 1280 by 720 because that's like better YouTube dimensions and whatnot. Okay, and I'm going to make a struct because I like structs. I'm going to make it for the bubble. So this is going to represent every single bubble on the screen. So we're going to have a speed. We're going to have... X position, Y position, and a radius. And they're all gonna be F64s, because that's just good for piston. And I like consistency and whatnot. So we're gonna create that bu bubble struct, and then we're going to give it some implementation. So unlike in C++ or C, Rust is sort of interesting in its type system, in that it has a bit more like I guess you could call these interfaces where you have a set of function headers and you can sort of like implement functions for a struct in Rust. It's, I'm really not describing it that well, I don't think, but it's, it's very interesting and I do like it a lot more than in C, how you would work with structs there. Because this way you can actually say like struct dot and then you give it a function. You don't do that in C, you would run your function and then pass in struct or a reference to it as like the first parameter. So this is actually really nice, I like this a lot about Rust. So we're going to create a public new function, this is going to be our initializer. Uh, and don't forget to put in that return type there. Okay. And I'm going to give it an option parameter, this is going to come in handy later, there's another X F64. So we want to... create a bubble, right? That's what we're gonna do. Uh, so we're gonna create this bubble. And the reason why I'm doing, the reason why I have this little num as an option, you'll see it's because what I want to do is have some bubbles that start either at the top of the screen or at the bottom. And then I also want to have some bubbles that just are free floating with like a random initial y value. So some, I mean if I have num set here, if it's some f64, then that means it's going to be a stationary bubble either at the top or the bottom of the screen there. You know, it's going to be stationary, so speed equals zero. And then b.y equals y, and then we got that, and then we'll return b. That sounds good. I don't need that. There we go. Okay, so let's actually fill out what we're going to need in here. So the speed is going to equal, uh, what should our min speed be? We're going to give it a minimal speed of 10. Oop, whoopsies. Yeah, minimal speed of 10. And then we're going to do some random stuff right here. Random F64 times 90. There we go. And then Y, you're going to be a random F64 again. So this just means get a random value of like, it's a 64-bit float 
and then I think it's between zero and one. That makes sense because I'm not doing a modulus on it, I'm multiplying it. So it must be between zero and one. And let's see why, what's our bounds gonna be for that? We're gonna do height of the screen plus radius of the bubble. So then for X, we're gonna have F64 and uh, just anywhere in the screen, anywhere in the width of the screen. R is gonna be that little R value. And let's actually create that real quick. R is gonna be some random F64. And I'm gonna multiply U by, we're gonna do one eighth of the width. That sounds like a good maximum. And the minimum is gonna be five pixels wide for the radius. That also sounds good. Okay, so this is how we're gonna create our bubble. This is what we have implemented as a method on our bubble. So let's actually go ahead and put in our main loop function. Right, okay, so this is where we're actually gonna put in piston stuff. But before we can do that, uh, I do want to put in some basic colors and I had a few picked out already. So I'm just gonna put those in right here. As you can see, I don't quite know what uh, this value would be as a decimal and I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna leave it like that for right now. And we're also gonna put in our alpha value, so this RGBA. It's nice that uh, piston allows you for less than opaque values. Yeah, so sort of like in Love2D and Lua, the piston game engine, your RGBA value is gonna be between zero and one. It's not gonna be between zero and 255. So we're gonna have this stuff right here just to keep it bounded because, you know, usually if you like go into a color picker online, it doesn't give you between zero and one like this. Uh, we're gonna call that backgrounds. There we go. Let's see, so we want a list of bubbles. I think, so I'm gonna create like a get bubbles function. That way we can look at, um, yeah, like returning a vector of bubbles but I'm gonna create that function after I do this main one. So just hold tight for that. And next we have to create our piston window. So we're gonna use this window settings function right here. Uh, we're gonna call it lava lamp, and then we're going to bound it by width and height. Why can't I ever spell height? Man, that is bizarre. And then we're going to call on its escape, exit on escape, true, and then dot build, and then dot unwrap. There we go. And what this, it's pretty cool to see like jQuery style function chaining in Rust. And it actually makes a lot of sense. So what I assume is each of these functions actually return the very window object itself. So they give up ownership to the next function and that's how it's able to do this in Rust. And it's actually really cool. And if you're wondering what type this is, it's just a piston window. So let me actually write that out. There we go, piston window. And then we're gonna capture the windows events. That's all good in order. And this way, we can actually grab an event and whatnot. And so this way, it's essentially window.events.new uh, and then a mutable reference to the window. And that's how you can do like a simple event loop in Piston. So uh, we're gonna say if it is, let's sum, let's see, I don't really care about the value equals e dot render args. So this says is if we're going to draw the window and if let's sum u equal e dot updates args. So this is saying if the current events you're getting from the piston central event loop is to draw the window, then we're gonna put all our draw code here. And if it's to update the simulation, then we're gonna put our update stuff there. Uh, so I'm gonna do the update stuff first. So let bubbles equals at mutes bubbles. I'm gonna call it bubs. I like that word bubs. So for B and bubs, and we have to actually pass it off to this one because we need a mutable reference to bubbles. And that way we can 
do it without giving ownership over to this because that way, because this is bound in inside another context, it's going to lose ownership and then you're going to dereference bubbles, unless if we make it a reference like this. So it's a little bit of craziness, but I mean, I think it's pers I personally think it's worth it for the craziness that the crazy awesomeness. Why can't I spell speed? That is the Rust programming language. And then we have u.dt. So this little this little event right here gives us a delta time, which is what really helps us in our program. I love delta time. It's so good. <laughs> I know it. I know it sounds like very trivial, like delta time. Like duh, obviously you would have that, but I don't know. Like I. Before I started using game engines like, you know, Love 2D, I just was not using Delta Time for any of my, like, custom-made engines or anything like that. I wouldn't call them engines, they were, like, pretty small stuff. Alright, so this code does is, for every bubble, uh, you're gonna make it go up by its speed times however many milliseconds have passed, whatever fraction of a second has passed. And then, if it is like above the top of the screen, then you're just gonna put it at the bottom there. You know, simple stuff, same thing as what I had with my Lua lava lamp. Which, by the way, if you have not seen that video, go ahead and see it because it's actually like super chill. And I didn't get a whole lot of views on that video, but you know, I think it's actually pretty chill. Uh, let's see, I don't need a mutable reference here. No, I'm not changing anything. Uh, so we're gonna do window.draw2d because Piston also has 3D capabilities, which I will definitely get into later. Uh, so we're gonna pass in a reference to the events. We're gonna do C, G, comma, something I don't care about. And let's see. We're going to say clear, and we're gonna give the background color and G because that's graphics inside the graphics context. So we're gonna clear it with this background color that I've defined all the way up here. And then what else are we gonna do? We're gonna say for B in bubs, once again, for B in bubs, uh, we're gonna call it ellipse. Uh, we're gonna give it the bubble color. So ellipse is a piston function. So that's why we can use that. So we're gonna give it the bubble color. And what else are we gonna do? Uh, C dot transform. And then comma G. So we have to give like that bubbles uh, coordinates and whatnot. So we're gonna say B dot X minus B dot R and then Y for like the upper left corner. And then we're gonna have to give width and height. Okay, and so all of this will work except I haven't done get bubbles yet. So I'm going to, have to create that get bubbles function just real quick and then it all should work. And we can see a pretty cool lava lamp in Rust. All right, so this is going to return a vector of bubbles. It's not going to return a reference, so when bubbles actually gets it, it's going to have ownership of the data that you know, it's going to have ownership of the data that this function returns. And I don't actually have to put a lifetime because it's not returning a reference. It's returning actual data. So Rust knows not to kill it because why would you want to kill something that you're trying to return from the function? Uh, so we don't need a lifetime for this. That's pretty cool. Hi, yeah, I guess there's like no lifetimes in this video then. That's nice. Uh, so we're going to create bubbles and let's see, I think you can actually, I think you can infer the type of bubbles. I don't need to put that there. Actually, I don't even need return. This is rust. What am I even doing? Uh, and we're going to say let's n equals, I'm going to do integer, you know what, we're going to, no, we're going to leave it at that. JK, we're going to make it unsigned integer. I like unsigned integers because I don't, I'm not going to have like a negative number of bubbles, you know. Uh, and then we're going to do that because for integers, it's not going to be between 0 and 1 like floats are because, you know, you can't have a value between 0 and 1 in an integer. Uh, this is going to be between, this is just going to be like any random unsigned integer that you can express within 64 bits, which is why I want to modulus it by 15. So it's going to end up between some value from 0 to 14 inclusive. Uh, so we're going to do n and I don't care about 
that from zero to n. Uh, we're gonna say bubbles.push, because remember it is mutable, so we can actually call push on it. Uh, the new bubble, because we actually implemented new for bubble. You gotta love Rust structs, oh my god. And we're gonna say, so these are gonna be the ones at the very top because we're passing an option of height. So it's Y is gonna be at the very top of, or sorry, at the very bottom of our window. Uh, and then we're gonna do sum with sum zero. And we're gonna push one with none. So it's gonna have like some random uh, Y value as I set for it. And let's go ahead and build this with cargo. Uh, okay, so we have a few errors here, but let's go ahead and try to debug. Okay, let's maximize this so I can see it better. There we go. Uh, Okay, so we have something here that's obviously not good. Uh, I missed a period here, and then Bubble does not have this field. Well, no, duh, it doesn't have this field. All right, here, let's go fix what we can. Uh, so get rid of that, and then we have a BR somewhere, apparently. There we go. There we go. All right, let's try building this again. Yeah, okay. We still got a few, but it's a lot less than before. Expected S64 found integer, duh, you know, what are you gonna do? And then this is an associated function, not a method. What could that mean? Oh, you know what? I used the wrong function for that. Okay. Dot next, there's that, and then sum 0, 0.0, there we are. And it's always a good idea to go from the top down when debugging because sometimes later errors are entirely dependent on earlier ones. Like in C, if you mess up on defining a function, then later calls to that function or to that variable or whatever you want to define, it'll pretend like it doesn't exist. So you get like a bunch of errors when there's only really one. It's kind of like a domino effect. Uh, and then let's see what this is. Let's go inspect that. I think it wanted a unit type there. Yeah, expected that. Okay, let's go ahead and build again. Okay. Cargo run. Hey, what do you know? We got, uh, well, I think it's the wrong orientation. So let's, uh, let's actually go back and, wow. Flip height and width, first of all. And then we'll try this again. Okay, there we go. That's, that seems much bigger than just a simple YouTube. Uh, thumbnail, but yeah, here we go. We have a very simple lava lamp in rust And it seems my processor does not like running rust So I'm going to change up the colors on this a bit just to make it look a little different from the one I made before uh, And then I'm going to make it a bit smaller Okay, so that looks a bit better and it's twice as small. That's pretty good. Okay, so that is all I have for you guys today. If you found the video helpful or otherwise entertaining, please don't hesitate to like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on social media, or click the little notification bell. Seriously, every little bit you guys do helps me out a whole lot. So I really appreciate you guys. If you guys have any other projects you would like me to work on in Rust or any other language just to like take a look at, please leave it in the comment section down below. Apart from that, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.